hey everybody welcome back to my channel today I'm going to be talking about obstructive sleep apnea obesity hypoventilation syndrome and the similarities and the different differences between these two so I'm going to divide the video into three I'm going to start with OSA and then I'm going to talk about OHS and then uh, I'm going to wrap it up by talking about the complications that arise from these two. So first I'm going to talk about OSA. So what's OSA? OSA is obstructive sleep apnea. What does that mean? So the pharyngeal muscles, they relaxed when you're in supine position and that causes compression of the airway. And this causes snoring and a little bit of an abnormal ventilation that may cause many like sleep disturbances they'll be snoring and then they might um, have periods of apnea wherein they don't breathe for a while and then they may toss and turn a lot and eventually they um, stop snoring or they uh, they might recover from the apnea but uh, these uh, episodes happen quite a few times uh, during the night and this needs to be uh, diagnosed with history from the bed partner right and you can also do a polysomnogram and achieve a diagnosis of OSA this is mainly a clinical diagnosis right uh, so what happens in OSA uh, the the funny thing about OSA is that it's going to have a normal uh, arterial blood gas which is pH is normal that is uh, 7.35 to 7.45 and then uh, PO2 is also going to be normal which is like 80 to 100 mmHg and PCO2 is also going to be normal which is 35 to 45 mmHg and it's also going to have a normal AA gradient uh, this is um, um, the gradient between the uh, partial pressure of oxygen uh, in the alveolus versus the pulmonary uh, venues pulmonary capillaries so this is going to be normal this means that there is no no intrinsic um, lung damage it is more of a, an extra pulmonary um, pathology that causes pulmonary symptoms so what can happen um, when someone has uh, OSA right let me just erase this uh, the manifestations the clinical manifestations like let's say they've had obstructive sleep apnea for about three to four months now how would that manifest so in the uh, they'll have daytime sleepiness right because uh, they haven't oxygenated well in the night time or uh, they did oxygenate well except that it came at cost of their sleep because they were tossing and turning snoring etc then they're going to have fatigue some of them may um, present with psychiatric symptoms which is like depressive symptoms and this is this is very high yield because you need to um, uh, you need to rule out OSA when diagnosing major depressive disorder you need to rule out medication induced or substance induced or um, medical ca causes that that could have led to depression like even nutritional like let's say b12 deficiency can also cause um, depression b6 deficiency can cause depression so that's a whole another story we won't be getting into that now but yes uh, it does present with depression it could present with depression and it can present with concentration impairment okay uh, so these are the daytime symptoms now let's talk about 
um, obesity hypoventilation syndrome. Now this is a little bit different because this is going to have restrictive pulmonary function test. What's happening here is they're obese and that is restricting the lungs ability to expand okay uh, and that causes a restrictive pulmonary function test and these people are also going to have a normal AA gradient however they are going to have an abnormal ABG which is arterial blood gas they're going to have uh, the primary diagnostic criterion for uh, OHS is their PCO2 is going to be more than um, going to be more than uh, 45 mmHg I'm gonna mark that for you oops should have used a different color let's pick something lighter ouch yeah um, but also, the, the very many of them have pH that that is below 7.3. So this is how you come to a like this. Yeah, and they can also have like low PO2. But the main guy to arrive at the diagnosis is uh, PCO2 more than uh, 45 mmHg. This is important. Uh, and of course, clinically, they are obese and you have abnormal vitals. Now, um, what is going to be common for OHS and OSA? Uh, you know now that both of these disorders are, you know, affecting your um your body's ability to oxygenate uh, so what happens especially like with local lung uh, pathologies that can happen with this is that um, both OHS and OSA they can cause hypoxic pulmonary vasoconstriction all right and this can uh, later progress to pulmonary hypertension right and that can cause um, increased stress on the right side of the heart which can cause right ventricular failure and quad pulmonale i mean right ventricular failure from a pulmonary pathology itself is core pulmonale right so that's that um and the other thing that ohs and osa can cause is they can cause reflexive sympathetic stimulation which can cause systemic manifestations like systemic hypertension and it can also cause um, atrial fibrillation or arrhythmias of sorts right uh, again so the uh, I wanted to talk about what's common between these uh, these two pathologies the first thing is it can progress to um, core pulmonale it can cause um, systemic hypertension and arrhythmias and also the one fact that I uh, quoted back then which is a normal AB uh, normal AA gradient the A gradient and the um, alveolar capillary membrane is going to be normal in both these pathologies uh, and uh, one more thing that uh, you you should be remembering is that if it does progress to core pulmonale it can cause fetal edema fetal edema um, and especially in obesity hypoventilation syndrome all these abnormal uh, abgs uh, they can cause uh, non-osmotic 
they can act as a non-osmotic stimulus for antidiuretic hormone secretion which causes water retention so a lot of uh, pathologies happening uh, downstream of OHS and OSA but it's important to um, tell them apart it, it's important to know that in many cases these two uh, pathologies can coexist and uh, based on whatever I said like uh, what's going to be common between the three is that um, it, they have normal AA gradient, they, uh, they can both cause systemic manifestations. And what's different between the two is that um, OHS is going to have an abnormal ABG and OSA is going to have a normal uh, arterial blood gas um, measurements. Uh, so I hope that this was informative. I'll probably make a different video on the management of these two, but this is where I'd like to end it because I don't want to drag this out for too long. Uh, I hope that this was helpful if you have any questions regarding this video put it in the comment section below and i'll get get to it when i can thank you for listening and have a wonderful day i love you